So Keynote 361 is a study which uh, is looking at bladder cancer, urothelial cancer. It's a randomized phase three trial. Uh, investigates individuals who are previously untreated with metastatic disease. Almost all of the trials we've done so far are focused on individuals who failed frontline chemotherapy. We've now moved those drugs into the frontline setting. Pembrolizumab had a positive randomized phase three study in individuals who'd failed chemotherapy. So Keynote 361 is now saying, can we breed frontline chemotherapy? Key to it is it's a three-arm trial. The control arm is chemotherapy. It's platinum-based chemotherapy. So that means cisplatin or carboplatin. And it's allowing patients with you know, a broad spectrum of symptoms, renal failure, performance status two, for example. And then the two study arms, one is chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab. And the other arm, the ambitious arm, is the pembrolizumab alone. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do what we've done in the second line setting and give single agent immune therapy, resulting in long-term durable remissions, and then sequence immune therapy and chemotherapy in that arm? And then the key last part of that arm is the biomarker. Can we select patients? And then the other arm, the chemotherapy combination with pembrolizumab arm, I was asking a slightly different question, which is can we... Uh, look at can we improve progression free and overall survival by giving the immune therapy up front with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is good at getting in control of disease. The immune therapy is less good at that. The progression free survival for immune therapy is short. Chemotherapy is longer. If you give the combination together, you might be able to get in initial control and then allow the immune therapy to get in long term durable responses, which, which is what patients are looking for. So the results of the front line immune therapy trials at the moment have focused on single agent atezolizumab and single agent pembrolizumab. There isn't any data on any of the other drugs. The atezolizumab data on 119 patients looks really strong in terms of its overall survival is above 15 months and that's long for that population. It's a cisplatin ineligible population and we were expecting figures between 9 and 12 months. We got 15 months. And the pembrolizumab data, we show higher response rates in the PGL1 positive subset. And those response rates can go all the way up to 48%, depending on the cut point and how you look at it. 37% in all comers. And 37% response rates, in my opinion, has a good chance of beating chemotherapy. Because chemotherapy response rates are slightly higher, but the chemotherapy responses are less durable. So the, the question is, what frontline data do we have available to us to support the frontline approach in this setting. We have good second line data. We don't have that much front line data, but we do have two trials, one with the tezolizumab, one with pembrolizumab, both of them investigating individuals who are not eligible or fit for cisplatin dose therapy. Um, both show encouraging response rates, but the tezolizumab data really shows this impressive overall survival also. And what that is beginning to tell us is if we sequence these drugs, we may be able to maximize outcomes. Because remember, the progression-free survival with single agent of tezolizumab and pembrolizumab in this setting is short, but overall survival seems long. And putting that together, it kind of suggests to us that sequencing these drugs may improve outcome. And I hope that turns out to be the case in the randomized trials.